Hello, hello. Good morning. I'm just going to wait a moment for everyone to begin joining in. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Buena suerte. Um, hello, everyone that's wel welcoming in. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to give it a couple moments as everyone filters in. I'm excited to discuss this again today and have it as a live so that everyone that's joining in will have the opportunity to listen as I go along, but also towards the end of this discussion, if anyone has any questions they'd like me to touch on. Um, I love talking about this stuff. I'm incredibly passionate about it. So I'm excited to have this opportunity with all of you who are joining in right now. So I'm just going to give it another moment as people are filtering in. Hello, everyone that's joining. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit today and start earlier in my day for several reasons. One of which is I know my evening ones in the States, um, a lot of my other followers around the world aren't able to participate because it's very, very early or late hours for them. So I wanted to start a little bit earlier today because I wanted all of everyone who wanted to be a part of this to be able to join. So thank you for everyone that's joining in from Europe. I think if people were early enough in Australia, as I know I have a lot of followers there, they might be able to tune in. But thank you for everyone that's joining in. And I would love to know where all of you guys are located. So if you want to comment in the box below and let me know where you're chiming in from, I'd love to hear it. Thank you for everyone that's joining in. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have everything written out, of course, just because I don't want to um, skip over anything or miss anything as I get carried away and talking about everything. So if you see my eye gaze over here, it's because I'm making sure I'm, I'm hitting all the notes that I wanted to make sure I covered today because there's a lot of really important education I felt very called to share with all of you. Um, and today we're talking about connecting the hearts, working with spirit through mediumship. And I felt very called and compelled to discuss this particular topic for several reasons one of which is a lot of misunderstandings and um lack of education in regards to this realm of work and i wanted to clarify it much more deeper for those of you who have ever been interested in having a mediumship and connecting with their loved ones or for those of you who experience those sensitivities with connecting in with the other side and with spirit I wanted to just bring a little bit more knowledge and education to clarify some things with you and hopefully put yourself at ease um, if you've had any misunderstandings or miseducation. Um, I know a lot of us have received our idea of interpretation of spirit through Hollywood or from what we've heard from other people who have experienced spirit. Um, so I wanted to just do a deeper discussion on it to clarify some things. So thank you for, hello from Finland. Awesome. I'm so glad you made it. Um, thank you for everyone that's joining in. If you would like to take a pen and a piece of paper to take notes as we go, you're more than welcome to. I will ask that questions are held for the end, just so I'm not distracted by the screen moving too much. Um, but so also I can address them, um, as well. So let's go ahead and begin. Today we're talking about, again, connecting hearts, connecting with our loved ones through spirit and mediumship. As always, I'd like to say that I'm not here to tell you I am right or wrong. I'm merely here to speak my truth and my understandings have been gained from a lot of my own experiences, a lot of my continued education, and the downloads and awareness I've received directly from the collective consciousness. So I do want to really emphasize that everyone is at a different um, time in their journey, working through a lot of, and releasing a lot of their outdated beliefs, um, stepping into their truths. So I would really like to emphasize that through this discussion, take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't at this time, because above everything, we really need to respect each other's um, ideas and opinions and where they really are in their life so again 
take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't and come back to it later if you are drawn to it again. So thank you everyone. Um, and I just ask that you come with an open mind today. So let's begin by gaining a deeper understanding of energy composition and the science of quantum physics. I feel this is important to explain, um, hopefully to get our critical mind on board in understanding spirit and the spiritual realm. As many of you are well aware of, I discuss a lot about energetic awareness because it is such an important comprehension in regards to psychic work um, and working with spirit. And for those of you who are more logic, scientific based, I feel like understanding this helps us feel a lot more comfortable with understanding spirit and working with spirit. So um, energy is anything and everything. Energy is not defined by time or space, but our human... Oops, sorry, I just lost connection for a moment. Can everyone hear me okay? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Because it just said I had lost connection for a moment. Hi, everyone that's joining it. Okay, good. Sorry, that was weird. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to rephrase that one more time. Energy is anything and absolutely everything. Vibration is in everything and anything. And it is absolutely everywhere. And energy is not defined by time or space but our human capacity, our mental and critical mind in this lifetime does define our receptive perspective by time and space. So it is a very human experience, if you will. Um, I wanna clarify the difference between weight and density of vibration, the difference between heavy and solid. We have different levels of vibrations, if you've ever heard of this terminology or frequencies. Um, let's see, this, this is a dense form of energy. It still holds vibrational capacity, but it is a dense physical form. Our physical bodies are energy, but it is a dense physical form of energy. Our words and our thoughts are energy, but they are not a dense form of energy. They are a lighter physical form of energy. That's why they're not tangible. They're not able to be seen, seen or held or touched. Whereas our physical body or a glass vase is able to be seen and touched. And our human capacity is oftentimes defined by our five um, senses to hear, see, taste, smell, and touch. So those are kind of limiting in regards to how truly vast energy really is. And a lot of our perceptions of these five senses are based out of our psychological comprehension, our subconscious and critical mind. So there's also different layers to vibrational weight. We talk about low vibration weight and high vibration weight. The difference would be a low vibrational weight capacity would be negativity, um, anger, uh, processed meat, processed sugars on a physical realm, a higher vibrational um, layer of energy would be love, compassion, happiness, um, positivity, uh, nutrient-rich rich organic foods on a physical level. So there's definitely a scale and there's definitely a, um, there's so much that can be categorized based on that scale so it really differentiates. But I really want to emphasize the difference between high and low as low vibrational capacity is that of a heavier, denser form, if you will, um, the negativity, the heaviness of energy, and then higher vibrations would be that of like love and light and higher capacities. So um, I wanna touch again that our body and our physical, in this physical realm of energy is a denser form of energy. Spirit is a lighter, denser, a density of energy. Spirit is also a higher vibration and has a lesser weight. You probably have heard when our soul leaves our body, it loses 21 grams in that exact instant. They've actually done test studies on this. Um, so to clarify, because I did the research this time, it is not two ounces, it is precisely 21 grams. So when we pass over the weight of our soul leaving our physical body, it literally drops 21 grams as it returns back to source, as we cross over, if you will. So... Energy is not defined by time or space, but again, it is our human capacity. Our mental and critical mind in this lifetime 
that has been defining it. Our mental capacity and comprehension keeps us in what's called a three-dimensional reality based out of our five senses. When we begin doing a lot of that deeper work and, and opening up our conscious evolution, if you will, then we begin, begin being able to see past the 5D reality. We're able to understand energy and witness the, the actual power of energy and spirit around us. Um, along with other things, if you want to like astro travel and do all that kind of stuff, that's past the 5D reality um, or the 3D reality. We have an energetic body, which would be in regards to our chakra system, our meridians, our auric field, housed within our denser form of energetic physical body, but they are still very much intertwined. So when you've heard me talk about Reiki or if you've had a session with me, I talk about how the body stores energy, different vibrational energies within our, within our physical body because we've suppressed them through traumas and experiences and they can over time become even more denser manifesting into physical form. So you've heard of someone experiencing a lot of worry issues tend to cultivate stomach ulcers or someone who carries a lot of anger might have experienced back issues. Um, women who suppress a lot of their emotional weight can develop physical manifestations of uterine cancer or um, tumors and stuff. So that vibration, if not addressed, can be manifest. So that's why it's so important that we're very actively being aware of our body, being aware of our energetic body as well, our emotions and our energy and whatnot, so that we can address it and avoid a lot of those manifestations that don't need to be avoided, or that don't need, that need to, that don't need to be avoided. <laughs> um, I was going to say something else with that, and I just went on a tangent now I forgot where I was going with that um well I'll if I come back to it I'll come back to it um when we can get our mind on board and accepting and understanding the spiritual realm and the spiritual capacity gaining enlightenment and energetic ascension we begin moving past again that 3d the mind body and soul must be on board our Psyche, our critical and subconscious mind play a huge role in how we are able to interpret spirit and energy. Um, so the psychological comprehension of what brings fear into the equation of being open to spirit is something I really want to address. I know from my own personal experiences, as I've walked this path, I did go through a very serious stage of where I didn't feel comfortable working with spirit in so many ways. Um, and it really hindered me from being able to interpret it clearly because I had all these false narratives I had collected over the years from watching scary movies, from listening to what people's scary experiences, watching like the ghost shows that were so intriguing. And so when I would experience a uh, paranormal experience or psychic spiritual experience, my subconscious would immediately be influencing the experience itself because what our subconscious and critical mind are really meant for is for our protection, for our safety. We've already witnessed this at some point and now we're going through the experience of it. So we already know the answers because we've already seen it. So now we're going to play it out as if it's already happening as we've seen it before. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, and this is why I really wanted to talk about this today is because I know a lot of people can resonate with this. I know a lot of people have experienced this in their own um, spiritual experiences as well. So I felt like addressing this in hopes to bringing some clarification can help kind of alleviate those stored ideas or stored um, misunderstandings so that we can release them and move forward and work in a way that is really in alignment with our authentic self. Okay, so um, what brings fear into the equation of being open to working with spirit? First of all, the critical mind, fear of the unknown. We are literally programmed in, in our mind's capacity to naturally fear or completely disregard what we cannot comprehend. When we do experience something of the unknown, our subconscious mind wants to chime in and influence. If you cannot experience, like if you can't understand something through your five senses, our mind instantly is like, what the heck is this? Or this doesn't exist, I'm just imagining it. 
and totally disregards it. But more so often we fear it immediately because we're like, I feel pressure, I feel an experience and I can't understand it. I can't put a name to it and logically comprehend it. So I'm instantly gonna go into the state of fight or flight where I fear it. Um, much of my life from probably about nine years old to 20, I filled my subconscious with false narratives and perceptions of the spiritual world. I, I mean, my mother, God bless her soul, had me watch The Exorcist, the original one, at nine years old. And I'm pretty sure at that point in my life, I was like, I can't experience spirit anymore. It freaked me out. And for those of you who don't know and probably can relate to this, I was seeing full fruition of spirit as a little girl. As probably from around, from when I clearly remember five or six, up to about nine years old where I would physically see a full fruition of spirit and at the time my mind was still developing so I hadn't quite solidified the critical mind if you will and it was not a scary experience I was like who like I know you're not supposed to be there but who are you you're not scaring me but I am acknowledging your presence and it was just kind of like I didn't understand it but I was okay with experiencing it but after I started watching movies like that and filling my subconscious with this is the experience of spirit, it really caused me to shut it down and really try to push that sensitivity and that gift away because I didn't want to experience it. It scared the shit out of me. And so I want to emphasize how much, our, how much of a heavy influence our subconscious mind plays in our upbringing as well our religion a religion is a major one i know someone privately messaged me the other day wanting me to touch on religion too and again i'm not here to tell you i'm right or wrong i am merely here to share my truth and understanding and a lot of these religious comprehensions were stemmed from a time where we didn't understand outside of the five senses we were in a capacity of experiencing and truly being like, I don't see this, I can't, I don't understand this, and it's scary. Um, so of course we're gonna share that with others that don't touch that, it's not, it's not, it's it's scary. It's opening up a, a door that is not good for you. Um, because in my experience, I've experienced it as a scary experience. Um, but again, I respect everyone's views and opinions, so this, take what you want and leave what doesn't resonate with you. Um, but this fear has been passed down from our parents and our peers. And being told you're opening yourself up to dark energies is not necessarily true. And this is why I want to clarify this today. Um, low vibrations versus high vibrations. Again, ang low vibration would be anger, resentment, hurt, fear. Higher vibrations would be love, happiness, compassion. We will perceive these vibrations depending on how our subconscious wants to perceive them. This is where um, that whole vibrational scale comes into play and really a lot of our own personal experiences and traumas. For example, someone who has had an up a healthy upbringing, experiencing love from a parent will have a healthier understanding of what love truly is. Someone who has experienced um, or been in a, a victim of sexual abuse will perceive love as a different comprehension than someone who has had a healthy experience. The same thing is applied to the spiritual realm. Someone who has a healthy relationship and understanding of the spiritual realm is going to have a healthier perception of spirit versus someone who has had a negative experience or trauma with it, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so that being said, um, I will not deny that there's not low or negative energies within this realm. That would be very ignorant for me to teach. Um, but much of what we recognize as low vibrations is more so defined or that are typically defined as like negative entities, evil or harmful, are truly manifestations of these low vibrations, these hurt and the sadness and anger that's been released into the world. And might I remind you that energy cannot be created or um, cannot be created or uh, uh, why is my brain blanking right now? Destroyed. But energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transmuted. Okay. So what we are told or what we, our subconscious wants us to um, understand is negative entities, evil or harmful are truly just the manifestations of these low vibrations that we're experiencing. 
and our subconscious is adding fuel and focusing on it and now experiencing it as a dark entity. So now it's become manifested in our minds to be perceived as this dark entity that we watched on a horror movie 10 years ago. Does that make sense? Um, because as you know, where our mind goes, energy follows. Plus our own, our own subconscious influencing it. Um, these energies can become something stemmed from our imagination that are not truly there. So I hope that clarifies it a little bit more and understanding like what are real what are we really defining as like dark evil energies? They're low vibrational energies that have been manifested because we manifested them out of our imagination. Um, this is another example that could be totally applicable to this is us blowing something completely out of proportion. When we're already in a heightened state and we have an experience. It makes, it makes it really difficult for us to perceive the situation clearly for what it is. So if we're experiencing spirit or paranormal uh, phenomena, and we're already in that heightened state of awareness because that's why we're experiencing it, and then our subconscious comes in and says, oh my gosh, this is a scary experience. Um, this is what's gonna happen. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to blow it out of proportion versus if we're coming from a, a calm collected space of clarity and we're perceiving spirit for what it really is it's not a scary experience um one of the best quotes i ever heard was um i was at a workshop with gordon smith who is a a global medium a well-known medium and we were talking about this and he said i don't believe in haunted houses i believe in haunted people our mind is very complex and influential and can be a tricky thing. We've heard the mind can be a tricky thing. Our mind can create things in our reality that are not really there. So that is why it's so important that we're addressing our critical mind. We're healing through our traumas and bringing clarity to what they truly are so we can move forward in a place of clarity and understanding versus the critical mind and the subconscious mind influencing, influencing and dictating. So this is another prime example of someone who has filled their subconscious with a lot of false narratives versus someone who is a, you know, educated medium, a developed medium who really understands spirit's capacity and what it really is. So someone experiencing spiritual paranormal phenomenon who has not done the work in releasing energetic baggage, false outdated beliefs, has a heavy subconscious influence will perceive spirit exp expressing their energetic awareness of difficulty communicating so they would bring spirit would bring awareness to your throat area trying to articulate or share with you that they had difficulty articulating someone experiencing that that, that doesn't understand it will feel like spirit is suffocating them they'll feel oh my god there's pressure on my chest on my throat someone is trying to kill me because that's what's happened in a scary movie I witnessed before. Does that make sense? Whereas someone who is, you know, senior, who has developed, who is really truly understanding and witnessing spirit with clarity, will immediately know this spirit is trying to to, um, to emphasize or bring awareness to the fact that they had a really difficult time communicating, communicating their emotions. There is a difference. So hopefully that is a little more clarified on the difference between being developed and, and not being developed. Um, the same thing is applied to curses and hexes. I've had so many people over the years that messaged me privately and are like, do you do um, spirit or hex and curse removal? This is again my own understanding, so take it as you will. But energy and spirit have, um, have to respect the law of free will. We all have free will. We're all very much aware of this. And energy and spirit have to respect that. So no one can put a negative energy on you unless you allow it. If so-and-so says, hey, I'm going to curse you, and I'm putting this curse on you, and you put that in your subconscious and say, oh my God, now I'm cursed. Now I'm going to be manifesting this curse on myself. You've taken that on and allowed it to manifest versus someone saying that's not possible. You can't do that because that's not that's dictating my free will. So you can't do that is going to be like, no, I'm going to repel whatever projection you're trying to put on me, whatever energetic projection you're trying to push on me because I'm not open to it and I'm not willing to accept it. So you don't have to allow it. Um, 
but you allow it by consciously and sometimes unconsciously accepting it. This is where energetic boundaries come into play. I've talked about this a couple times. Um, your energy is your own energy. And just like you don't allow someone to enter your house, you have the free will to say you're welcome to come in or you're not welcome to come in. The same thing is applied um, to the energetic realm. You don't have to allow anyone into your energetic realm if you don't want to. You just simply say, I'm not accepting this. This is my energy and I reflect anything that is not from my highest good. So are you guys all following me? Is this making any sense? Hopefully. <laughs> so um, I hope that resonates with you and I hope that brings a little bit more of a comprehension of what energy truly is. It's very simple and it's very black and white and our mind wants to make it more complex than it needs to be. Um, so moving on to addressing working with spirit and mediumship. I want you to understand when I reference spirit, source, universe, God, they are all at the center point of the highest vibration of love and light. Our soul and our loved one's souls are extensions of that infinite highest vibrational love and light capacity. Okay? So when we work with true spirit, authentic spirit, we are working with the highest vibration of love and light compassionately and respecting our free will. I want to clarify that and I really hope it resonates with you. Um, this is where communication, communicating with our spirit guides and placing energetic boundaries and asking them to delegate is really important just so that they can assist you in being able to perceive spirit with clarity in a way that you feel comfortable. Um, when working with spirit is incredibly important that we have done the work we have done the healing. We have rewired our subconscious in the process. Sorry, I paused again. I do not know what's happening with Instagram Live today. So when working with spirit, it is incredibly important that we have done the work, we have done the healing, we have rewired our subconscious in the process to perceive spirit truthfully and authentically. If we have not, our subconscious will cause us to get in our own way and it will cause us to perceive incorrectly. This is why I am constantly encouraging all of you, especially those of you who want to do this work, who want to do psychic and mediumship work, to continue developing yourself. Continue taking workshops, education, practicing, doing your own healing. And this goes for all realms, energy healers, psychic, mediums. Everything begins and ends with ourself, so we must first address ourselves and fill our well before we are able to fill the cups of others with genuinity, compassion, and the highest vibration of love and light. And at no point in our path are we above that. We are in this for the long haul, for our whole lifeline, and until our bodies are returned back to the dirt and our soul back to spirit, we are in the process of learning and growing and experiencing and healing, and this is a lifelong experience. This is a lifelong karmic contract, if you will, and it's for our soul's evolution. So please always be humble enough to know that your work, is, there's always room for expansion. Spirit in the universe is completely infinite. There is no limitation, and so is our capacity as well. Even as senior as I am and as much work as I've done in, in my career and in myself, there's always room to grow. I'm always learning every day, and I'm humbly open enough to be open to that learning experience because it's only developing me that much more, okay? Um... So, when working with the spiritual realm, we are interpreting through awareness of psychic energy, the feeling of spirit energy, spirit's energy. This is how spirit primarily communicates with us. Our energy and awareness needs to be developed. Um, our psychic intuitive capacity plays a, whole, a hand in interpretation, but we really need to be developed in order to perceive this clearly as our mind always wants to interject. This is why it's so important to have a passive mind when doing this work. This takes time, this takes patience, and this takes de development and practice. So, um, I've been asked, what is it like working with spirit? And I wanted to touch on this today because it's definitely shifted over the years. As I mentioned before, when I was younger and experiencing spirit, I saw full fruition. Um, and it might have felt that way too because my critical mind was, and my imagination were so much different at that time. It takes a lot of energy to manifest themselves in full fruition, so it's not common. When I'm talking and working with spirit, I'm not necessarily 
looking at them having a conversation and a real dialogue, I am feeling their presence. I am feeling into their expression of their essence and interpreting that way and articulating it to the client. I will see them in my third eye where it's like out of the corner of my eye or in front of my eye or they're showing me something, but I'm not physically seeing it in person. And I think a lot of us who are beginning this realm of work um, and really trying to pursue it, it's hard because we want to experience it within our five senses to justify it, but that's not the reality of working with spirit. Our working with spirit is working past the three-dimensional, which means we are working with our sixth sense and above and beyond. So what is it like working with spirit? It's, it's not like a physical human being in front of me. I won't say that someone can't experience that because they might just be different in their clairs, but generally speaking, there's not a person sitting in front of me. They're normally to the side, it's in my awareness, and I'm feeling into it. And someone who has ever been interested in seeing a medium, be sure that you're working with someone you're really drawn and called to work with. A seasoned medium who is really developed will be able to experience that and portray that to the point where you're feeling the experience of that loved one as well through how they're expressing it. You probably, unfortunately, have lost someone and in that loss, have you ever connected with someone that we're talking about that person you lost and you're bringing up those memories and those feelings and those experiences with that person and it's just so fulfilling and comforting? That's how a, me a true medium should be working. We are portraying the essence of that spirit and anything that they're needing to convey with the sitter or the recipient, okay? That's not scary. Even when I've worked with spirit, and again, they're, sh they're telling me the experience in their life, whether it was something they were hurt with or something um, that was really heavy for them, I'm feeling it to a lighter capacity, but I'm feeling it to the extent to just understand what it is. If spirit is again portraying, I had a really difficult time communicating my, my emotions to my children or my wife. Spirit is gonna put that heaviness in my throat to portray that he was experiencing that in that lifetime. If spirit had stomach cancer or lung cancer, I'm gonna feel it to a lighter capacity, but to enough to understand uh, I'm feeling this awareness of cancer in my lungs or my, in my um, stomach. So I can confirm to the sitter who exactly it is I'm talking about. That's not scary, but it's because I've released a lot of those comprehensions and outdated beliefs that once um, really got in my own way of truly experiencing spirit for its authenticity and its clarity. So there's a difference. Um, but please believe it took a lot of time to get there. It took a lot of practice, a lot of development, a lot of patience. Um, so for those of you who are called to do this work, please be patient with yourself, but please intentionally try to grow and develop. Um, why mediumship is so valuable, and this is another thing I really wanted to touch on for those of you who have no interest in becoming a medium, but have been interested in connecting with a loved one through a medium. We are emotional beings. We have emotions through a wide variety um, for us to experience, learn from, and grow within this lifetime. This is part of our soul's development and ascension. The same thing with our loved ones and our friends and our family. Everyone processes loss differently. Um, as I touched on yesterday, I lost my mother um, about six and a half years ago, and please believe that was a huge emotional roller coaster for me. Um, and oddly enough, it was such a big um, trauma. It really projected me into my spiritual reawakening in so many ways. And, you know, my, my mother was truly an amazing soul, even through all her flaws and her human experience. And when she passed over, it was very sudden. Um, it was not expected, and it was a huge shock to myself and my whole entire family, and probably her as well. And I was truly lost with a lot of, left with a lot of uncertainty, uh, no closure. I get, had no closure, and but a huge, like, it felt like my rip was, my heart was ripped out of my chest, and the ground was literally ripped from under me, which is a really traumatic feeling. Um... 
through the process of grief and, grief and loss, I experienced a lot of resentment, a lot of remorse, abandonment, regret. I felt lost and isolated because I didn't have the opportunity or control to gain closure or healing at that time. It was a very heavy weight and hurt for me to carry around. Um, and it hurt so bad that I could like actually physically feel it. And I'm sure some of you have experienced this before. It literally felt like someone was grabbing my heart and squeezing it as tight as they could. And I had like knots in my chest. That was a manifestation of the physical, uh, I mean, of the emotional weight I was carrying around. And I was not in a good place. <laughs> I know I didn't get out of bed for days. Um, I was doing anything, taking anything really to numb the pain and step away from the experience. And for any of you who have heard me discuss healing and emotional healing and Reiki, you cannot avoid this trauma that we suppress. When we avoid it, we only suppress it that much more and leave room for it to manifest in different forms. Most commonly physical ailments, which can manifest in, if left prolonged into physical disease. Um, but also emotional triggers. I was a wreck. I was an absolute wreck. Um, so it's not good to avoid those. Obviously, with grief and loss, it takes time to heal. There's so much time. And even today, today six, day, six years later, I'm, I'm still I'm in a better place for sure. But I still experience lessons and growth just from that experience. I'm still learning from my mom, even though she's here in spirit and not physically here. So I really want to talk about this for several reasons, but most primarily because I know everyone can relate to this. Um, so shortly after my mom's passing, I had a series of bizarre coincidences and intuitive guidance that led me to seeing a medium myself. And for me, this was truly an eye-opening experience and I understood that he the healing capacity of mediumship. I was able to gain the closure and the comfort knowing that my mother was very much around me in spirit, although she was not physically here in the physical realm. And again, through the five senses, it's really hard for us to accept if it's not from the five senses, we can't justify it. Our critical mind's like, well, then it doesn't exist or it's scary. Um, but in all actuality, when we can move past that and be open to spirit and be open to our loved one's presence and their energy, it can bring a lot of like healing and a lot of clarity for us. Um, I also gained a lot of valuable understanding that through our own healing, spirit heals too. When spirit crosses over, a loved one crosses over, they go through a period of, we call it the resting phase, where they're processing their whole experience in their life within that lifetime. Only on the other side, they've stepped away from the ego and the critical and subconscious mind and they can see the life they live with absolute clarity. And oftentimes that spirit, our loved ones can be like, oh my gosh, I did that. I shouldn't have ever done that. Or I created this trauma or I held on to this energetic suppression and I wanna address it too. Maybe there was a connection, and I witnessed this actually in several of my mediumships, where a mother has come through for a daughter or a father, and and a and a you know a son or a daughter or a family member or a friend, where they didn't say or express the things they really wanted to because of their ego, because of their fear, because of their guilt, and they carried that over to the other side, and that loved one who's sitting in front of me just needed to hear those words because they left, with, they left without the closure. They didn't gain the healing on, in this lifetime that they needed from that loved one that crossed over. So in being able to express what they wanted to truly express and the sitter being able to witness it and receive that healing and that awareness alleviates and heals that spirit on the other side as well. So there's that duality there and I feel like that's not talked about. No one really thinks about that. Spirit on the other side is still growing. They're still processing, they're still evolving based on their karmic experiences within that lifetime. So when someone can be open enough to experience mediumship with someone that they trust, that they truly believe it has integrity and clarity, that can not only bring a ton of healing for them, but it can bring healing for the loved one on the other side as well. So um, that being said, that was my discussion for today. <laughs> So I hope that 
that helps alleviate some false narratives, some false comprehension and education in regards to the spiritual realm. Um, I hope that brought some closure in understanding what it is truly spirit brings in. Spirit is the highest vibration of love and light. And when we work with the truth of spirit, it is always with the highest vibration of love and light and intention. It does not mean when you go to a medium, someone who's developed, someone that you trust, you know, that has proper education and understanding, it does not mean you're opening up a dark door to the unknown because that's not quite true. Um, so I really want you with this discussion to be very aware of what false narratives and understandings are you carry, carrying on, carrying with you and holding on to. And for those of you who are wanting to develop their psychic or mediumship sensitivities, be very mindful of what you fill your subconscious with because it will dictate everything. So if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them at this time. I'm just going to scroll through to see if anyone had said anything already. And thank you for everyone that joined in from all over the world. I'm so happy that we were able to do this a little bit earlier and more people were able to connect in. Um, maybe I'll do them more often in the morning. <laughs> Let's see. Any questions? Um, have I been able to communicate with my mom? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's odd because even though I was going through the trauma of adjusting to her not being physically here in person, um, I still felt her presence. It was odd. And this maybe just was because I already was um, naturally developed in that sensitivity, although I didn't understand it for many years. I knew she was there, but I couldn't quite like justify it or wrap my head around it. And I was so, in such a place of grieving that it really made it hard for me to be like, okay, she's here in spirit, but just not here physically in person. So that was a process for me to come to terms with it. And now through the years, I, I definitely still connect with her. I can feel when she's walking into the room or she's around me. And she's very predominantly been around me now that I'm pregnant. And in the last year or so, when that um, child energy has been around me, and my mom has been around me even more, which to me clarifies that she's able to build that relationship on the other side with my child, even though my child won't physically know her in this realm. Um... Did I have a teacher who helped me or was it a lot of self-education trial and error? I, I have invested a lot, not just monetarily, but my time and my energy in my development, in attending workshops, in having mentors that I really truly trusted and resonated with and teachers and educations and books and, and again, my own practice. It has been a process. No one becomes a psychic medium overnight. You just don't. It takes fine tuning that skill. It is, is literally like a muscle. You have to work with it. You have to develop it. And we don't, we're not always like, you know, that aware of how the body works. So when we can have a mentor that's like, this is how you work it out properly, it makes it a lot easier to step into it and develop it properly. Um, I keep getting like the idea of like working out in the gym. If you don't know how to properly work out a muscle, you're going to develop it very weird or you're not going to develop it at, at all. So that's why it's really important to work with someone you truly trust that you know upholds the integrity and the genuinity of their work. Um, so yeah, I've had mentors, several, and I've allowed my, intu my intuition and my guides to bring them into my path. And I just know in that instant you're who I'm meant to work with. And that might be for a time or two, that might be for a couple months or years. Um, sometimes I come back to them. I just listen to my intuition when I feel called to and all everyone has this capacity We all have a divine compass. We all have a in, Intuition and that truly is meant for us to utilize to guide us on our path in this life So I always encourage you even people my students people who have reached out to work with me I always emphasize check in with yourself listen to your intuition and make sure this is the best decision for you because it's not my place to say, I know everything and you should work with me. 
and everyone should work with me because that's not the reality of the situation. I know I'm meant to work with certain people and other people are meant to work with other people to genuinely get what they needed as a mentor or as a teacher or as a healer. So yes, it's been several years of education and development and practice. Do you ever connect with animals or pets? Um, it's not my, I have, but it's not the primary work that I do. If it just comes in a vision or it comes in with a spirit to um, confirm that person had, you know, a little chihuahua dog with a blue eye, um, that's when typically an animal will come into the session. But I do know that there are people that are, that are more connected to the animal realm and that's something that they more specialize in. That was just part of the, the karmic work they were meant to do in this world. So I personally, I wouldn't say that's my, my first and foremost thing, um, but other people do and can. Any other questions? No? All right. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, my dear souls, it was such an absolute pleasure connecting with all of you today. I really appreciate all of you that joined in and I truly hope that you gained and took away from this exactly what your soul needed. I, tr I trust that that is what happened. And, uh, oh, I have one more question. What is your perspective on what happens to our soul once they pass? Do they reincarnate? I believe in reincarnation personally. That's just something that has resonated with me. Um, awareness that I've received on my journey like I said before when a soul passes over that's just the end of their karmic contract it's their time to return home and once they pass over they go through a resting phase where they understand and really process their whole lifeline within that lifetime lifeline because each lifetime we enter into we create a karmic contract I'm sure you've heard of this where you've agreed to have these experiences, agreed to learn these lessons and do these things and whatnot. And it truly is for our own soul's evolution. You've heard of the difference between an old soul and a young soul. You've probably heard old soul, not so much young soul, but you can tell the difference in someone's comprehension and their growth and where their spirit really sits. Are they young in, in everything that they do or are they old soul with that wisdom that they've carried in through several lifetimes? Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you again for, so much for joining. Um, I believe I'll be posting this, although I posted it the other day. So I'm just going to sit on it and see if I feel called to, um, to post it. But thank you, everyone, again. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon or day, morning, day, night, evening. <laughs>